It is such a beautiful morning. Good morning, guys. So I'm trying to implement a few days a week where I wake up early and work on the garden because it's getting hot fast. Last week, our highs were in the 60s, and today our high is 95. This is what I mean by it's really hard to grow spring crops here because it just gets really hot really fast. But today, I wanted to do a Q&A because I've been getting a ton of following on all of my platforms, and I feel like you guys just need to get to know me a little bit better. So I asked you guys questions over on my Instagram and over here on YouTube, and I got some really good questions. So I'm really excited to dive in. I have like 10 that are kind of all different, and then I have like a rapid fire of all different questions. A lot of these questions were repeat questions. So you guys are wanting to know the same things. Uh, I did have to write them down because I use my phone to film, but let's jump into it. So the first question I have is, are you originally from Kansas? What is your dream? I thought this was perfect, so I wanted to start with this. So no, I'm not originally from Kansas, but I have now officially lived here longer than anywhere else and more than half my life. So I would consider pretty much being from Kansas at this point, but I grew up majority in South Carolina, um, but I also lived on a few other states on the East Coast. I loved South Carolina. I think you get the best of both worlds there, uh, but Kansas isn't bad. I've grown to really like it here. I initially did not feel that way when we first initially moved here, but uh, yeah, Kansas is pretty cool. I don't, I don't hate it. Now, as far as my dream goes, I would love to purchase like five to 10 acres, build an A-frame home, have a huge garden that I can grow a year's worth supply of all different things. That's kind of my goal when it comes to this garden is to see how much I can push in such a small space, especially when it comes to those quantities of canning. So I think eventually once I am able to eventually maybe purchase property or buy a home on property. I just really want an A-frame. I mean, I'm obsessed with A-frames. I love them. Uh, if I had a choice to live in a home for the rest of my life, it would be an A-frame. So that's, that's kind of the gist of my dream. I would, I would love to do that. All right, what got you interested in growing your own food? When did it start? So it started five years ago now. This will be my fifth year garden. So it roughly, the itch to start gardening probably happened like February of March five years ago. As far as what got me interested in growing, I was definitely someone that jumped on the bandwagon of Netflix documentaries. <laughs> And I just, I really started to hate learning about all of the food supply and how we could just do so much better. And during that time period, I actually came across homesteading for the very first time. And I was just so intrigued by homesteading. I thought it was just the coolest thing that people were growing so much of their own food and that they did it all on their own property and that was their life because at the time I was living a very materialistic life I wanted to get away from that and at the time I really wanted a hobby outside and gardening was one of the first things um, I was going through like a 25 year crisis I was 25 at, or 24 going on 25 at the time and honestly I did not know what direction to take in life and I was like you know what I remember liking growing green beans once when I was like five. So yeah, that's, this is what it's turned into. <laughs> that was the only time I grew anything before this garden as well. I grew green beans like one summer when I lived in South Carolina with my sister. Are you married? Do you have kids? Yes, I'm married. You will never see me wear my ring. I am so bad at this. Okay, so since I garden and I heavily do so much in the kitchen, honestly, I barely wear my wedding ring. I just don't want to get it dirty, honestly. So I never wear it. I figured I would get this question mostly because probably 95% of my videos, you will not see me wear my ring. I actually decided to wear my ring in my vermicomposting video two weeks ago, three weeks ago now, and my hands were getting dirty, so I put my ring in my pocket, and there was a whole scare of me thinking I lost my ring in piles of dirt, and I had a frantic episode, but it was fine. I found it. But yeah, I, I don't like, I don't, I'm not a jewelry person. Honestly, I have zero jewelry on right now, and I never wore rings prior to my wedding ring, so it kind of just bothers me. Like, I can't be the only one. Um, as far as kids go, no, we do not have children. And this will be kind of probably, some people probably won't like this answer. We don't want kids. Uh, we're not planning on having kids. Uh, we know that things happen. And if things were to happen, then we would love that child. But we personally don't believe parenting is our future. So, yeah, that's where I stand on that. 
All right, so next question is biggest gardening challenge you faced when you first started gardening. So I feel like just honestly learning is the biggest curve. I feel like I really didn't start getting a grasp of gardening till probably year three, year four. And even then, I mean, going into this year, I feel it just feels so much easier than the previous years. I feel like I'm really starting to get a grasp in gardening, but I'm sure at some point this year will kick my ass because that's gardening. Um, you are forever learning. Every year is completely different. You're going to have disappointments, so know you're gonna have disappointments. My very first year gardening, guys, <laughs> I started from seed because I wanted just to start from seed initially. I grew the plants out. I planted them. The very next day, we got a hailstorm that knocked them out, and that's kind of just, the fun of living in Kansas. You deal with a lot of weather, you deal with a lot of wind. Um, and yeah, it's there's a lot of different elements. So I think just learning your area, because I mean, once you move to, once I move to another area, I'm gonna be learning a whole different climate, microclimate, all those situations. So I just think it's knowing that you have to learn and knowing that you will be disappointed along the way. It's just, that's gardening. What was the most important thing you learned that helped you have successful harvest? Honestly, it was probably succession sowing and learning how I could really max out my bed for the entire year. Um, I initially, the first two years gardening, I think I had one round going into the garden and now each one of these beds is roughly planted two to three times depending on what crop I'm doing. Um, so I can really, really max out this space now. Succession sowing is absolutely everything and it also helps elongate your garden. It will really help just amplify your harvest. Um, if I, I said, there's only one most important thing, but two, I also think mulching played a huge role um, just in water retention and the plants being a lot happier. So that is that, th those two things I think are the most important. What got you into video creation slash social media? Is social media your full-time job or do you have a nine to five? So I got into video creation, was I? 15 I was 15 so when I was 15 through the rest of what 18 I was in broadcasting I was my high school's broadcast producer so was my sister so my sister got into it obviously before me she's older um, and I was just really intrigued I thought what she was doing was super cool so then I got into it and once I got out of high school I really just never stopped randomly picking it up honestly I probably should have picked it up a lot sooner so I could have really milked the wave of social media um, but I just I always love video creation so I always dabbled in it I tried to really throw my hands at it when I was doing uh, bodybuilding like five years ago um, but I I just gave it up it wasn't really a thing uh, but I missed it again so I picked it back up uh, I, I just I love video creation honestly I think it's so fun I think it's a really great way to express myself it's a creative outlet outside of gardening and the two mesh together I just really have fun showing you guys my space and learning from it so I I just I really love social media um, as far as do I have a nine to five is this my full-time gig that's a funny story so I was already working towards this and unfortunately with all of the COVID stuff that happened, I was one of the people that was let go from their job come early 2021. Um, I was in wine sales. Um, it was kind of a niche wine sale market as well as very like small wineries. Um, it was a really fun job. I actually really heavily enjoyed wine sales. It's a really fun atmosphere, uh, but they let me go. I luckily enough um, had a good cushion in my savings that me and my husband decided just for me to go for it. As far as that equating to anything much of yet, I did just become monetized. That's where this question was asked. So yes, my YouTube is monetized. I just was able to monetize it a month ago. Um, I'm not really seeing enough money to where I could say this is my full-time gig, but I'm also not doing anything else but this. Um, I'm in a very fortunate scenario where my cards played out right to potentially allow me to live out my dream job. So hopefully so. Um, I would love, I mean, I love doing this. So I hope that this becomes my full, full time thing. <laughs> All right. So what is your process for hardening off seedlings? Oh my gosh, you guys wanted to know hardening off. Um, I think it's just because that is what is currently going on right now. Honestly, day one, I will, I will bring them out from like 11 to one. I will put them in the peak sunlight, but I won't allow them to go longer than like two hours max. 
after that day, I put them back downstairs with zero lights because, I mean, they just they just had a lot of bright exposure. They don't need any more lights. So then when it comes to day two, I just increase one hour each day. That's kind of it, to be honest. I will make sure that my first few days, I'm not just throwing them outside when it's super windy. I live in Kansas. We can have some really powerful wind days. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to throw them out on a day that's 40 to 50 miles per hour. Just don't. Um, but kind of just watch the weather, see how, gauge it. Um, if it's going to be really strong, and sunny and they haven't been out yet maybe find a little bit shadier of a spot so it's a little bit cooler um but just you baby them for a few days then kind of throw them out for a few days bring them in and then put them out honestly don't don't overthink it a lot of people will have like eight to ten day hardening off days i'm not about that am i considering any fruit trees for the yard i would love fruit trees but honestly i've kind of maxed out this uh, area so I would I am totally planning for trees for whenever we leave uh, this space I <laughs> I'm really hesitant to like want to leave this space now that I finally got like this huge garden but we're hoping that maybe like a handful of years from now we can uh, move and do all that jazz but I'm gonna be kind of picky because again I really want an a-frame <laughs> and a-frames are not popular homes for some reason I don't know why they're, I think they're cool. Okay, so it appears you've spent a lot of money on your garden. Do you plan to turn a profit? So, uh, yeah, I have spent a decent amount establishing the garden. This is a question I get quite often. But again, I've done this over a five-year period. I started with one garden bed, then I went two garden beds, then I went three garden beds. I had a ton of grow bags. And I think with doing it just slowly, kind of doubling through time, it's one, just eased the pocketbook. I mean, if I would have done all of this at once, I don't even want to know, oh my God. But it is an investment. But I think it's a really cool thing when your hobby can also do so much for you. So for with gardening, it also provides food for me, um, which is great, hello. Um, but it also provides an artistic outlet. It provides my therapy, it provides my yeah it's just it's kind of all the above honestly i love my gardening space it's one of the best investments i don't plan to market garden i think it'd be cool but i don't really want to deal with the public in that type of sense honestly i would rather put back all of my own food and be able to teach through social media versus having to grow to sell. I think growing to sell is just a lot more stressful. For me, I would rather have an outlet where I'm not worried about having to sell my produce or sell my flowers. I just think that's a whole other ball game. Um, and I, I'm not the best when it comes to managing stress like that. And I know that about myself. But I mean, if one day down the line it came down to it, I think it'd be really cool. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Maybe one day, but my I don't really have plans to. I Never say never. Okay, last question before we do like a rapid fire. What are you looking forward to growing slash harvesting this year? I am just honestly so hyped to have Goldie Honey Bear Sunflowers in my garden again. I'm sure everyone's sick and tired of me talking about these sunflowers, but guys, they literally stole my heart last year. They are amazing. Um, also, really pumped about my, oh, what is it? Mongolian giant sunflower. So last year I grew Russian mammoths. Mongolian giants are supposed to average like a foot taller. <laughs> so yeah, I'm planning on big, huge sunflowers again. And I'm also excited because this year I can give my chickens um, sunflower heads. But, on, oh, that's... A, I guess the one thing I'm most excited about harvesting this year is eggs. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, the chickens are about to go outside. So honestly, I think I'm most excited about harvesting eggs and then growing goldie honey bear sunflowers. Yeah. Okay, rapid fire. Let's do this. I see you have one tattoo. Do you have any others? Yes, I have four. This one is my favorite. It's a pair of peonies. Okay. How old are you? I am 29. I will be 30 toward the end of the year. Yay. What zone am I in? I am 6B. My average 
frost dates um, is April 15th to roughly October 15th. Favorite flower, obviously just answer this, Goldie Honey Bear. Uh, one thing you refuse to grow, cauliflower. Something you struggle growing, broccoli. How big is my garden space? I would say with the upgrading we've done, I'm probably sitting roughly, probably like close to 1800 square feet total of growing space. I could be completely wrong on that, but it's somewhere, somewhere in there. I, it's something like that. One thing I hate about gardening, weeding. Do I have any pets? Yes, I have a cat, a dog, and now eight chickens. And that's it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that Q&A and getting to know me a little bit better. I thought this was pretty fun. I think this was my very first Q&A I've ever officially done. I think I did like a small one at the end of a video last summer. But I think this is like my first official official q a so thank you guys um it's been really fun i think that these would be really fun to do in the future as well so let me know if you liked it in the comments below but as far as today's video goes i think that's going to be it i'll see you guys all next week bye